Hello and welcome back. Isaac Segunro here, back with the second video, part two of our employee onboarding form. So we're going to be building an application and and I'm just kind of, some of this is going to be contrived. I'm just, just kind of going along just to go over some important concepts in in Power Apps and probably and also in, in Power Automate when we get to that point. So um, let's get started. So in our last video, we created this onboarding Power Apps form. And um, what we need to do now is we need to add a submit button, which I'm going to show you in this video. And also, we want some fields that are required. You know, so for example, it'd be nice to have work work email required. Um, and maybe manager required or job title. Some of these fields should be probably even all of them, but um, let's see. And I think, but the most important thing is when the user comes in here, as you remember in our last video, we made, we added this functionality where, you know, have you attended, have you been to orientation yet? And if they select yes, nothing happens, but if they select the no, these two new fields show up. So when these two new fields show up, we want to make sure that these fields are required. We don't want them to say no and then submit the form and these two fields are still empty. So let's go ahead and show how to do that. First things first, let's make some of these fields required. So we're going to come here, make work email required. Now, as I told you before, all of these different fields, um, in this instance, these are cards in Power Apps. They have properties, and you can get to the properties on the right hand side or in this drop down. I usually go through the drop down. So, what we're going to do is we're going to come here. We already have the required field selected. So, required. And all we need to do is just change this to true. True. So, let's do a few more of these. Drop down, let's go to required field. And it's if you see that it is disabled, what you need to do is go to the right hand side panel, click on the advanced tab, unlock the properties, and then we're going to come back here to the property, required property, and we're going to say true. And let's do one more. Let's say manager. At this point, they should know who their manager is. So we're going to say true definitely their start date they should know their start date change that to true okay so let's see what happens ah so as you can see true true all right let's change the color of some of this so we're going to come here make it consistent and it's, it's red over here because I was going over this before. Change the color to true. And by the way, these are also properties as well. If you click on color, you see it, it chooses it up here as well. So um, yeah, all of these things have properties. I think that's the most important thing to understand in Power Apps is everything has properties associated with it. Even the form itself has properties. The app has properties. We'll, we'll, we'll go over that when we get to those. When we get to that point, to those different um, um, concepts. So now, how do we make? How do we get these two required? And we want this to be dynamic. So when they click no, it should be um, required. Let me add a button so I can even show you what's going on. So I'm going to add a button here. You can either add a button or maybe even save. So let's add it an icon, a save icon. Come down here. Where is the save icon? Do, 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 do. Save, save, save. Where are you? Oh, there it is, save. Okay, I'm gonna come down here. And we're gonna add the save button. So you can either have save or you can even add a submit button. And we're gonna have a on select. So we're gonna say on select and we're gonna say submit form. 
And the form that we're submitting, if you look over here in, in our tree view in the left, it's form one. When you have a really big, huge Power Apps application, you can have several different forms. So it's good to specify which form you want to submit and make sure you submit the right form. So let's come over here. And if we try to submit or save, it, it does this. It, it lets you know that, hey, these fields are required. And even no notifies you up here as well. So let's close that out. And so what I want to do now is, oh, let me, I'm going to make this require so you can, so we want to make this dynamic and um, to go over what I was saying, let's say, for example, let's say this field was required. Let's make this true. And let's come here. As you can see, it's, um, the, it has a red outline. But if I say yes, even though we don't see it, it's still required. Um, let me put some data in here. And watch this make a liar out of me. Let's, let's do that. And put something in here. So yes. Okay. So if I click save. And let me make that field. Oh, let me come back here. It didn't give you an error, but as you can see, it wouldn't, it really wouldn't submit the form, right? So let me show you. So matter of fact, what I want to show you is, so what I really want to show you is to make this more apparent that it is throwing an error um, because you can't really see it when you click save. So let's come here. Um, let's go to form. Now this form one has properties. So we have this different properties here, border color of the form, on success of the form. We're going to get to that later. And then we have this on failure. So on failure, we're going to put a notifier. So if the form fails to submit when they try to click save, this will notify us. So we're going to say um, required field needs to can't be empty. So let's say error. Okay. All right. So to prove to you that it really is throwing an error. So if I click save, see, required field can't be empty, even though you can't see it. And so that's why, that's why we need to make this dynamic. So when they click yes, it removes the, um, it, it re removes the required. And if it's a no, it, it, it makes required. So let's go and do that. So the way we do that is the same way that we, we control the visibility. So we're going to come up here. Let's go to our visible field. Remember from the other day, let's copy this copy. And then we're just going to go to our required property and just put that in there. All right. And let's do the same thing for our checklist required selected. There you go. So if it's a no, make it re make it required. If not, then don't make it required. So now um, let's do this. Let's say yes. And let's see what happens when we try to save. And you didn't see me do this, but for the form one, there is the on success property. And we're going to say notify. Thank you for filling out the form. And it's a success, right? Now, you really want to take advantage of the form one. So sometimes a lot of developer, the mistake that we can, that we make, um, and I make the same mistake too, is we come here on this on select and we add the, we add that function here, the notify function. 
Um, and even if it says when you click on it, it's just it's just notifying that you really that you were able to select this form. You you the action you took was to press it, was to click on it. And even though the form fails, it'll still show you notify. So that's why you don't want to put notify on your on select. You really want to if you really want to know if your form was successful in submitting or saving, you want to make sure that you go to the form itself and add it to the properties on success and on failure properties. That's the, the best way to, to know if your form truly went through or not. So let's come here. And if I click save, as you can see, thank you for filling out the form. It was a success, which means that my dynamic really it was a success. It means I'm sorry. It, it means that um, that when no yes was selected, that it really did remove the required field. Now let me come here. Now another thing you want to do is you want to make sure because part of the reason why when I when I go and do a preview, this is happening, and this is a you know. This was a headache for me as well. So if anybody's dealing with this, you know, this may help. So part of the reason is when I click on what, what's going on is when you save it, it it's going to edit mode and really shouldn't be edit mode. It needs to be. Um, oh, that's for that. I'm sorry. Yeah, for some odd reason, it reverts back to um, the edit mode. When you when I do this, so what we want to do is we want to come here, and then we go to our on select, on select. I'm gonna do this, and then we're gonna say okay. Once they submit the form, we want a new form again. Form one. So that way, when they save it, it doesn't give that ugly no display, right? Um, so let's, to get out of this, we got to do this first. Okay. So now when we, when we do submit it this time, it won't. Let's do this. Okay. Submit it. All right, so save. All right, thank you, Phil. So as you can see, it came back. If I go preview, it doesn't give me that, you know, no item to display. So just remember that when you submit the form, you do it, you can also do a new form, form one. So give me a new form. Once you submit it, give me a new form. So it basically just clears out your data and gives you a new form. So just some something to keep in mind. So I think uh, the concepts that I wanted to go over in this video, I've done that. We went over the submit, we went over required fields and how to make it dynamic as well using um, you know if statements. So I hope that makes sense. Please leave your comments, leave your feedback below. If there are any questions you have, anything you want to see, uh, let me know. In our next video, we're going to be going over Power Automate. Um, Kind of going over the basics. So now, when they when they submit the onboarding form, we want an email, a notification to be sent um, to a manager or to someone. So, see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.